Hi guys, today I want to talk about a way that you can speed up your colour pencil drawing without sacrificing the quality and I'll be showing you by drawing this box. The key to this method is by using pan pastels. If you're unfamiliar with pan pastels, they are soft pastels that have been compressed into kind of a little cake and then you can use this like paint to paint the pastels onto the paper. I bought the portrait set but you can also purchase the pan pastels separately and I did add in a black as well. As far as how you put it on the paper, the pan pastel set does come with a number of different applicators. I personally like the one that looks like an eyeshadow brush because I find I'm able to be really accurate with it, but do give them all a go and see which one works best for you. Okay, let's get into the drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw in with colour pencil the eyes and nose, which are the areas of particular detail. I'm using polychromos pencils to do this and I'm working in my usual way which is starting at the lightest, working up to the darkest and back down to the lightest. And once I've got the eyes and nose to the level of detail I like, I can move on to the pan pastels. The first pan pastel colour I'm going to use is the white and I'm using this on any light areas. Not necessarily areas that are particularly white but just the lightest areas. And it is a lot like paint. So I'm using my little eyeshadow brush, loading it up with the pastel and then gently putting it onto the paper. I want it to be as smooth as possible so I'm creating little circular motions to do this. As you put it on, do make sure you are in good light because it is tricky to see because it's white. Once I got all that white down, I'm going to move on to the yellow ochre tint which is a very light yellow colour. I'm applying this in the same way as the white and I'm putting it on all of the light areas of the drawing. When I look at my reference photo, I can see this colour quite a lot throughout the drawing, so anywhere where I can even see a glimmer of it, I am putting it down on the paper. My goal with the pan pastels here is to create a really good base layer so that I can add fair detail over the top. And by creating a base layer with the pan pastels, I don't need to spend as much time shading and I can just focus on texture and depth with the colour pencils. I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt sienna tint again on some of the lighter areas before moving straight into some greys. Similar to when I'm using colour pencils, I like to start at the lightest, work up to the darkest and then back to light with pan pastels too. I find that it blends very nicely when you do it this way. So I'm going to start with the lightest grey I have in the set, which is not really a grey, it's raw umber tint, before moving on to the neutral grey. And I'm particularly using these greys to build up the white area on the chest. It's always worth remembering that white hair isn't actually white. It's made up of a series of greys. There will be some white in there, but really just on the highlight areas. A lot of the shadow is mostly made up of greys. So I want to create a rough base of that with the pan pastels, and then I can still add the detail with the colour pencils later. Let's move on to something a little bit brighter now with the Diary Lied Yellow Tint. This is a very vibrant yellow, but although the fox is brownie orangey kind of colour, I can see some of this colour as undertones in the fur. So I'm going to pop some stripes on where I can see that colour. I'm not being too concerned about blending at the moment because I will sort that out a little bit later. Now as I get deeper through the colours, I can start adding the burnt sienna, which is quite a good orangey brown colour, and I can see it a lot in the fox's fur. Now it's with this colour that I can start to blend it a little bit. So to begin with, I'm going to put down any stripes and particularly prominent areas I can see with this colour, and then when I haven't got that much pan pastel on the applicator, I can start to work in little circular motions to blend it together. And what that does is it puts a little bit of the burnt sienna colour in, but it doesn't overpower it and undo the work that I've previously done. So I'm going to keep adding darker colours with these darker browns. I've got raw umber and raw umber shade. And then once I've got all of that marked out and on the paper, I'm going to go back to the yellow ochre tint. I'm using this to go over a lot of the areas, not the very darkest areas, but a lot of the other areas to blend it all together. I want to make a very smooth base. So I'm loading up the applicator and still working in these little circular motions and you can see how it's becoming nice and smooth. Before I move on to the colour pencil, I'm just going to add a little bit of the black up on the ears and then blend that out as well with the yellow ochre tint again. 
And now I can move on to the colour pencil. And time-wise, I'm halfway through this drawing. So far, it has taken me two hours. So now I've got a pretty good base to work from. You can see I've got all of the lights and darks marked out. I've got the rough colour right, and all it's missing is detail and particularly depth around the eyes. Holly Kramos pencils layer very well over pan pastels, so that's what I'm going to be using here. And as I look at my reference photo, particularly in the light areas, I can see that there is a lot of fair strands that are made with a similar kind of orangey brown to the fur on the darker areas. So I'm selecting the Burn Ochre pencil to start adding these marks in. And all I'm doing, similar to how I would usually draw fur, is making little flicking motions going in the direction of that fur. I've made sure that my pencil is very sharp so I can create really nice thin lines. And I'm particularly focusing on both the direction of the fur and how long the strokes of fur are in the area that I'm drawing. For example, the fur strokes on the nose are far shorter than they are towards the side of the face. Now I don't actually need to put that many different coloured pencils on top of this because the base I've created is already so in depth. So I'm going to move on to the Walnut Brown in a very similar way to the Burnt Ochre and then I can move on to a dark sepia and start adding in some of those really dark tones. There's a lot of dark hair, particularly around the edge of the ear that I really wanna get some fur texture in there. And there's a lot of detail and some darker fur around the eyes and I particularly want to focus on there as well to make sure it looks realistic. I'm going to add in a little bit of red as well around the eyes because there is quite a strong color around those eyes. And once I've done that, I can move on to building up some of the fur on the white chest. Now I'm only using the colour pencils to add fur strands, I'm not doing any shading whatsoever because I don't need to. I'm just spending my time really building up the texture. Now all that's left to do is to increase the contrast on the eyes and nose with the black pencil and then just add in some whiskers. So quality wise, I would say that this is very similar quality to what I would have created if I had only used colour pencils. But time wise, I would estimate this would take me about eight hours with colour pencils. But by using colour pencils and pan pastels, it's only taken me four hours, which is two hours of building up the pan pastel base and two hours of the colour pencil texture. If you like this little fox, I do have him available on Etsy. I'll pop a link in the description. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a like and don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys, I'll see you in the next one.